Thank you. I would like to welcome everyone to our Tuesday, September 11, 2012 school board meeting. Um, before we rise for the Pledge of the Allegiance, I'd like to acknowledge that this is a September 11 meeting and um, remember all of those who were killed and injured on that day um, with a moment of silence before we say the pledge. Could we all stand, please? I pledge the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you all. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Anyone? Okay. Seeing none, um, I'd like to move on to item number two, approval of school board minutes. Uh, we can, if there are no changes, we can probably do these in, um, uh, bundle them together. Do I have a motion? Yes, I move for the approval of the school board minutes, executive session, Tuesday, August uh, 28, 2012, and special business meeting, Tuesday, August 28, 2012, as well. Do I have a second? Okay, do I have any discussion, comments, changes? No? Okay, um, all those in favor? 7-0. Comments from the public on agenda items. Any comments from the public? No? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to item number four, communications. Are we missing? Actually, I'm going to have to go back up to, where are the student comments? Are they? We didn't have any tonight, but we'll, we'll allow our administrators to. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't have any from the middle school, so I guess. It should have been on the agenda, but typically it comes right in this very Okay, time. right, right before your comments. Yeah. So um, we will add, uh, before communications, let's add a 3A, communication student reps. Okay, and we will hear from our high school student reps, Nolan and Abby. Hello. Um, for those of you who don't remember me, I am Abby Donnelly, currently a senior at Cape Elizabeth High School. And a lot has been going on, considering it is a week into school, and everything is, you know, everyone's settling in. Um, the fall sports are underway, um, have been for a while, preseason everything. And um, as far as I know it, our teams are doing pretty well. Uh, there's a football game this Friday, actually, against Lake Region at home, if you want to come. Um, we have a new guidance counselor, Mr. Keenan, um, who is the guidance counselor for the seniors and the freshmen, sophomores. Yes, they were fresh now they're sophomores. Yes. I'm all mixed up, still last year. Um, and then, yeah, Nolan. Um, I'm Nolan Morris, and I'm also a senior. Uh, we have iPad distribution has been going on for the past week, and right now iPads are about, about 75, 95% uh, of the iPads have been distributed to students, and teachers are starting to integrate them into their classes, um, uh, actually now using uh, a tool called Google Calendars to uh, update their students on everything they need to know about the class all in one place, um, which is very helpful. Uh, I know the the tech team was actually working all summer to, to distrib distribute them. Um, I, it didn't go as smoothly as they had planned, but now we're, we're uh, doing a little better. Um, and also, uh, to welcome the incoming freshmen, we also have begun a more uh, intensive Fresh Links program, which is a program where um, uh, seniors apply to, to be uh, to guide, or juniors, yes, yeah, so upperclassmen uh, apply to guide freshmen into, like, welcome them into the school and help them kind of find their place. Um, 
I'm an, an upper link and uh, it's, it's been going really well so far and I think it's really helpful for, for the incoming students um, in making them feel welcome. Okay. All right, thank you guys very much. Any comments for our, our questions for our student reps? All right, Meredith, now on to communications. Thanks. So uh, as Abby mentioned, it is the beginning of the school year, and opening is a big deal. That's what we look forward to every year. September's the best month um, in schools. Not that the other months aren't great, but the energy level is high, and everyone is enthusiastic and excited about learning. Um, so my thanks to everyone um, from our custodial and facilities staff who put in countless hours to help our schools sparkle and be ready for use, to our um, IT staff who are managing the not small task of having one-to-one -one devices for all of our students in grades 7 through 12, not to mention all of our teachers. So it wasn't perfect, um, as we pointed out, but I, it would be hard to imagine um, deploying that many devices in a perfect way, but again, we also had great support from volunteers, um, parents, and community members who stepped in to help us make sure that everyone got what they needed. Uh, also, I want to um, recognize that at the beginning of the, or point out that at the beginning of the school year, we recognize our employees um, for years of service, and we typically recognize our five-year anniversary dates, and we had, um, a couple of staff members hit the 30-year mark this year, uh, so I just want to mention them briefly, and they are um, John Casey and David Perry. So our, our thanks to them for 30 years. That is our um, longest anniversary, or our what do you call it? greatest anniversary date, the 30-year mark um, in the district this year. Also, uh, just an update on enrollment. We began the year um, with 1,676 students. That is a few more than we projected. Uh, we projected that we would be at 1660 this year, but um, so it's 16 students above what we were projecting, but pretty evenly distributed across the schools. No um, major influx of any students at any school or in any grade level. That um, was a great surprise to us, so we've been able to accommodate that. This summer, and I mentioned this at our end of August board meeting, but the professional development um, work going on in the district um, was voluminous, um, ranging from topics around literacy, use of data, curriculum alignment, um, response to intervention planning, just people working in all of our schools to make sure that they were ready for students and um, utilizing the latest tools and resources to meet student needs. So thanks to all of them. We also had a two-day training at the end of August for our teacher leaders, um, a joint training with our administrative team um, with a gentleman named Bruce Wellman who worked with our teacher leaders and our administrators around facilitating groups and leading teams. And while we um, in education do that every day with students, the art of doing that well with your peers um, is one that needs practice and rehearsal and feedback and coaching just as um, our work with students does. So I, we appreciate the support of the district in allowing us to do that work. Open houses are coming up. Um, seventh and eighth grade is tomorrow night, and fifth and sixth grade open house will be Thursday night, the 13th. I think there's also a kindergarten picnic tomorrow night. Yes, I'm getting a nod. Um, uh, juniors have their um, back to school night on the 20th of September, Thursday night. And I'm sorry, seniors are the 20th, and juniors are October 4th, the week, the following week. And have I missed any? A couple, some have happened already. Sorry, it says that. <laughs> Circled on the calendar even, that's right here. Um, let's see, district report card. You will, uh, as board members, be getting a link to that, we hope, this week. Our thanks again to uh, Eric Kramer, our new district technology director, for his support of Andrea Fuller, who has been um, trying to pull all of that information together into, a, into Google Sites. It is not yet where we want it to be, um, as far as publication goes, um, but it's certainly at a point where uh, I think you can give us some feedback about the documents that are included and the layout and um, how to navigate that piece. I think we'll be getting that link. 
we think this week. Yay! <laughs> We've been doing a lot of work to get ready. <coughs> wow. Um, so yes, a special thanks to Andrea for her work on that project. Related to that, I brought you copies, in case you didn't have them, everyone should have one, uh, copies of the updated vision and mission statement, and I want to say thank you to Megan, uh, I'm not going to say it correctly, Megan McConaughey, uh, for her work <laughs> um, in uh, doing the layout for us um, as a volunteer. It, sorry, I'll hold it up, it looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, it's very visible, and I, um, we've only run off a limited number of these at this point because our, because our adoption occurred in late May. We did not really have enough time left in the school year to ask students to submit some logo designs and artwork to support the vision and mission, but I have spoken with our art faculty, and we hope to kick off some sort of logo mm -hmm. um, competition later in the month, early October. Yes, thank you, Marguerite, for your support of, on that project. Um, also, I want to mention just briefly um, to the board um, that we have put out an RFP for an employee assistance program. Um, I shared um, just an outline of that information with the board. And um, right now, our HR department as a school district is um, one person who also um, works with town employees. We employ about 265 people and substitutes, so they're not included in those in that number. Um, we have about 140 people active in our substitute ranks. Um, and then there's the set of town employees. But one person, Arlene, who is our payroll and benefits administrator, functions as our HR department. Um, that, as you might imagine, is no small task. And um, in 2012, there are lots of other ways to support some of your HR needs. Um, so we have put out an RFP for those services. There are some agencies that contract for that work. Um, the total cost to the district would be somewhere, we estimate, in the range of four to $8,000 um, with savings that we had from health insurance um, and our health insurance projections and staffing changes this year. We think um, that would be money well spent because we spend a lot of time um, internally trying to provide supports that uh, we think could be provided um, through an outside agency. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not looking for a vote per se, but I would like to just get a sense from the board if this is something that you would support. I do have a question about that, Meredith. Please. Now, on the, um, the subcontract for providing EAP, would that just be for, you mentioned before that the HR department serves for the, both the town and for the school. So would this contract be for the school and town? This would only be for the school. Um, the town already receives those services through um, the Maine Municipal Association. The Maine Municipal Association offers that as a benefit to its members. And so this member. helps bring a little parity to our school employees. Sure. Yeah, great. I guess I always want to bring up the wellness, um, mm -hmm. how Healthy living, healthy uh, communication uh, relationships uh, make happier employees and happier teachers. Make so, no question. Mindful. And there is um, that there have been a number of studies um, by public health entities um, looking at the benefits of employee assistance programs, and I think um, the data is pretty clear that uh, they do provide a benefit to employees and reduce things like absenteeism um, in the workplace. And uh, you know, as you think of the work in um, an educational system, our work is interpersonal. Um, so being in a healthy interpersonal place makes a big difference in our work with students, but also our modeling for students. Um, and if, if the board would like some of those research studies, I'd be happy to send um, that data along. Um, I, I'd like to say, too, that it was probably about two years ago when we were out um, talking to the staff to get a sense of what they were interested in um, in terms of hiring a new superintendent and what they felt the strengths and the weaknesses were of the district. One of um, the things that was pointed out by staff members was no access to a human resource department, and it's a small school district, so if there are 
personal issues. I think um, this employee said they felt that um, most of the staff would feel more um, comfortable going to an outside agency than, for instance, not that we don't have wonderful administrators and wonderful peer um, teachers, but to take a, to take personal uh, you know personal items outside of the district would be more helpful and, and more constructive. So I think it's it's time that we address that need. So I'm definitely supportive of that. Um, and it's a relatively minimal cost, as I understand it. Uh, you mentioned uh, on the municipal side, that when you said the main municipal association provides that service, um, I assume there's not a comparable opportunity for uh, uh, educational association or any? Not at this time, although I will say that um, I, I, I believe that um, the main um, benefits trust has, had, has begun those conversations about providing that service, but it's not something that's currently available. Okay. David? Um, perhaps uh, I'm thinking of too many permutations and issues. Could you summarize again what, you, what exactly you think this will do and why is it a benefit and why the risks, are there any risks to it? Sure. Um, well, we're, it would only be a year at a time kind of contract. That's how the RFP was written. So, so it's not binding um, with respect to risk. I would say that right now, um, and uh, you know, I, I, I could, uh, each of our administrators could share experiences and situations in which they've been working um, with employees around particular issues that are impacting them in their professional lives, personal issues that could be related to uh, uh, marital issues, it could be related to financial issues, it could be related to uh, emotional health or substance abuse issues. Um, when you have the number of employees that we have in the system, those kinds of issues arise. I will also say that because of the nature of our work with students, there are sometimes issues that occur with students or that we are um, providing support to students around that impact us. Um, as professionals, the loss, a uh, child losing a parent, as an example, um, and an example that this district has experienced recently. Those kinds of issues can have um, an impact. So uh, staff would be able to access uh, counseling services on a short-term basis, for example, um, around those issues. So uh, just so I make sure I understand, when you, when you say personal issues, we mean personal, not personnel. Right. And secondly, we're talking about um, in that, I mean, it's not relating to job, the performance of a job, but more of a personal issue, and it's more in the service that's being provided is the nature of counseling. Uh, counseling, uh, training, um, support services could be, you know, a, a legal consultation. For example, you're trying to figure out how to arrange to care for an aging parent. Um, you get a, you might have a one-time legal consultation about how to go about setting up, um, you know, the, the, managing the estate or um, taking over as a caregiver. I, I would say these are, these are issues which right now cause people to sometimes miss work. Um, it, you know, can um, cause people to spend a lot of time individually, personally, trying to track down resources when there are, you can make a one-time phone call and someone's going to give you a list of, okay, this is what you're working on. Here are five agencies in your area that you can call who provide support for this issue. I, I am relatively familiar with this uh, type of an issue. And I just caution you that I would seek legal counsel in terms of setting it up because whatever this agency does or entity does could, on, on a vicarious liability theory, could cause us issues. And secondly, we want to make sure it's limited. Some of these things are highly private and maybe subject to confidentiality laws and all kinds of things. It's not some easily, I can understand why we'd want to delegate it, but at the same time, we have to be careful about how we do it and, and are they insured? Do they have, will we get an indemnity? All kind, these things can be seemingly easy but turn into a mare's nest, I guess is the correct phrase. Not handled well. And I think that's why you will find that there, it's a very small number of agencies that provide the comprehensive scope of work that we're talking about. Um, you know, I, I would say there are a handful in the state. 
offering this level of support. And I certainly agree. Pauline and I will be very cautious in reviewing the RF reviewing the proposals and seeking legal counsel about the awarding. Especially in the contract terms. Oh, thank you. But as a helpful suggestion, I would have them particularly look carefully at the contract between this entity and us mm -hmm. and what insurance they carry mm -hmm. and whether or not we're covered or not need to be covered under their insurance, et cetera. Yep. Thank you, David. Anyone else? Sorry, one other. Yes. Um, and the other thing I would add, I guess, in terms of talking to it, these agencies is utilization and whether they can provide us with information as, as to how the service is being used by the staff so that we can evaluate it in, you know, going forward. And that, we definitely agree with that. We did incorporate that into our draft um, RFP language for that very reason. We want to know if it's a service that people are really using. Is this ultimately, uh, is this, oh, you asked for us for you to, Sort of give a um, fist to five, <laughs> thumbs up. Thumbs well, down. I'm just curious because it's it's not a lot of money, but the issue could be very problematic if it ever goes sour. That's the only concern I have. But it, as long as you seek appropriate legal counsel, I guess I'm okay with it. And you said it's a one-year contract, so we'll have a sense in a year if it's being utilized and. Um, and is there a plan for um, educating employees on how that that's part of um, the expectation that you mm -hmm. they would provide materials that can be distributed to employees and we would um, as a district share those materials and help build awareness okay if, if i may make one more suggestion this is often considered an employee benefit and may be subject to ERISA. so i assume where we consult we'll look at it in terms of ERISA as well as regular legal problems Thank you. That, that nod. I, I'm with you. Okay. We have talked about ERISA. I, yes, sir. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, anything else on your report, Meredith? I don't believe so. Again? Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. So we will move on to item number five, new business. Item A, consideration to appoint school board member as delegate to the MSBA, which is the Maine School Board Association. Annual assembly taking place on Thursday, October 25th, 2012 in Augusta. Um, do I have a nomination? John. I would like to nominate um, David Hillman, who's done a, an excellent job for us in this capacity in the past, I think two, two years in a row. Um, and has represented us at the state level and in other circumstances as well, and has always done a, a great job. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a second? I second. Okay. I think Michael had a hand. No, yeah, so I defer to you. <laughs> um, any discussion? Uh, is this something you're willing to take on, David? Yes. Yes. Okay. I actually, it's, and I hope Meredith comes again this year because we learned a lot in two days last year. And it saved me, quite frankly, the necessity of passing on a lot of the information because she's actually at the same seminar as I was. So it, mm -hmm. it's very helpful. Okay, terrific. All right. Um, well, thank you for being willing to do that, David. I appreciate that. I guess this will be your third year. Great. Okay. I get continuing legal education credit for it. So. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. All those in favor? Seven no. Thank you. All right. So we'll move on to item B, which is consideration to approve the following athletic and co-curricular staff nominations. Uh, I think we can do this as a slate. Uh, do I have a motion, please? Uh, yes. I move that we approve the athletic and co-curricular staff nominations that are included in the uh, Tuesday, September 11, 2012, board packet. Okay. Do I have a second? Okay. Elizabeth? Okay. Any comments or questions or concerns? All right. All those in favor? 7 0. I guess I want to say, Mary. Oh. Um, I should have said. Uh, Meredith, thank you for um, giving us information about what the mentor role is and how um, it helps teachers 
um, going forward and how it's a state requirement as well. Um, and so thank you for that information. It was helpful. You're very welcome. Okay. All right, item number six, discussion, board goals, and strategic plan. Uh, Mary, did we have an actual vote? Oh, gosh. Yeah, we did. We voted before Kate. Um, no, I meant, did we vote? We, don't we have to vote? We did? We did. And then I commented. She commented I guess afterwards. I'm getting older and I'm short-term memory loss, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, all right, so board goals, strategic plan, draft, uh, our draft of the meeting calendar as well. So let's start with board goals. Um, I can speak to the board goals and people can weigh in as they see appropriate. Uh, these are our board goals for 2012 and uh, we do a periodic check-in to see how things are going and where we are with our goals. Goal number one was to review and sponsor a school budget that maintains vital programs and services within the district. This year, um, the school budget was passed in June by a two-thirds vote, um, and before that we had, I would say, about um, five months of planning, at least from our administrators and the board. Uh, and. Uh, I would say the budget process itself went very smoothly. We had, I think, almost no public comments uh, other than people appreciated how easy it was to understand. Um, so that goal was accomplished in June of, of this year, of 2012. Um, goal number two, successfully negotiate four separate contracts. Uh, and the, these contracts were for the administrators, the EdTech 2 and 3s, the EdTech 1 and administrative support, and the maintenance bus drivers, food service workers, and custodians. It was a heavy year for contract negotiation. And I am happy to say that all but one of those contracts has been negotiated at this point. Um, we're very close to ne finishing negotiations on the last contract, which is our custodian bus driver um, maintenance food service worker contract. And um, uh, I think our negotiating team met this week. Is that correct? Yes. Negotiating team? And do you think we're relatively, relatively Negotiations close? are scheduled for Monday. Okay, great. All right, so I would, I would like to take this opportunity, too, to thank all of those who have served on negotiating teams this year because it has been a very heavy year. And um, some people uh, have served on multiple teams. And remind me, let's see, can you raise your hand if you've been on a negotiating team this year? Can you raise your hand if you've been on two negotiating teams this year? Three? Michael? <laughs> oh. All of them. I know. And Meredith has been on every negotiating team. So thank you to those people who have um, worked very hard. These are long, hard hours. And a lot of times they happen during the work day, which uh, we have board members who work, who take time out of their work schedule to uh, provide this service to the district and we're very appreciative of all of your time and your energy. Uh, number three, support and endorse an updated and revitalized district mission and vision statement that reflects the values and expectations of the Cape Elizabeth community. This winter Meredith started uh, holding meetings within the community uh, among all the stakeholders including community members, teachers, uh, parents, um, students, who am I forgetting? The board, yeah, the school, school board. board. Uh, and uh, we started our work on mission and vision. A small group gathered after that to hammer out the language and uh, the language was presented to the board in May. The Cape Schools Open Minds and Open Doors and was adopted at our May meeting. And we'll actually be uh, 
the centerpiece for strategic planning, which we'll hear about um, coming up, actually. So number four links to this. Uh, utilize the updated mission and vision work to begin the process of creating a strategic plan for the district to be used to guide the direction of the schools for the upcoming years. And Meredith, do you want to speak to that? Yeah. That's coming down. So as the mission and vision was adopted in May, uh, we talked at that time about launching um, strategic planning or action planning in the fall. Um, the difference between strategic planning and action planning, I think uh, people generally think of strategic planning as more long term, more in the five to 10 year range, and action planning more in the one to three year range. So I think it's important for the board to have a sense of where they want to be. Um, you know, I, I think given um, some of the uncertainties um, financially going on, that a, a you know a three-year plan is probably a good target. But it will be important for for you all to weigh in on that. Um, right now, I'm projecting a timeline that would begin late September, early October, depending on when we make some decisions about that. To hold a series of community forums for stakeholders, there are a couple of different. Um, ways to go about that. One would be the open space technology approach, which you've seen used um, as community forums in Falmouth and Scarborough um, as examples. Another would be um, using um, what's called a futures protocol, which has been used in Wyndham and um, uh, Westbrook and some other, Gray New Gloucester um, and some other uh, districts in this area. Um, both are uh, opportunities to kind of start fresh um, using um, the mission and vision as a launching pad and to think about moving the district forward. I can share with you some more detail about the format for both of those and walk you through um, what those protocols might look like. Um, if you want to do that tonight, that's great, but I'll continue through the timeline for now. Um, then I would envision in mid-October we'd come back together, compile some of the data um, from those forums and a working group would convene. So again, similar to the vision and mission working group, you would have community members, um, board members, administrators, teachers, parents, um, students involved um, throughout the process to pull together a draft. Uh, the draft would be, I hope, complete by late November. Uh, Honestly, um, I think because we have a lot of existing data, because of the work that went into the vision and mission and some of the work that occurred prior to that with um, the listening and learning tour that Superintendent Murphy did and the board's work um, you know, in um, getting ready to hire a superintendent, I think, I think the data is clear and I think there has been a lot of consistent input that led to the vision and mission, which I, uh, so I think the stage is well set and I think it will not be as cumbersome in some ways as the vision and mission process were. The, the difficult part is winnowing down the priorities um, to have a draft and then to bring that draft forward, share that draft out for feedback and um, create a final draft which I'm hoping would be done in mid-January in advance of the budget season so that you have a multi-year plan to carry us um, forward. In an ideal world, you have a one-page, I think, action plan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's with some measurable outcomes and dates by which you intend to achieve those, I think if it's much longer than that, um, <coughs> you are spread in too many different directions and um, you're not utilizing your resources in the most effective way. So mm -hmm. that's the broad brush, and we can go into details anywhere you might like. I guess um, one suggestion would be, you know, I uh, imagine prior school boards have gone through the strategic planning and uh, I could vision voluminous uh, Excel spreadsheets with, you know, here's the issue, here's what we're going to do. And um, my point is, you know, I'd rather us focus if there's some areas that would be recurring, you know, items that we would do as part of a school district. Uh, maybe unless there's a significant opportunity of some sort there, um, really focus on, you know, a few key goals or priorities 
um, because things change quickly. There's new school boards, and even though we would know all the data, you know, in five years, three years, it'll be a different school board. So I would push for uh, a simpler, more targeted one. And if we don't have, um, you know, a, a outpouring of support or focus on it, then it, it doesn't mean it's not a priority. It's just not, uh, ne doesn't necessitate, a, you know, a, a big analysis just because, um, and I think if we went back and looked at the last strategic plan, and you know, I'm not sure where we are on those, but you know, make it that it has a good shelf life, and that we can actually have a plan that we can implement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Will any of this work in, um, incur uh, survey uh, companies that survey, survey companies to come in and evaluate? like we did for the boiler system or engineering costs or things like that? Um, I think because the facilities study, um, uh, engineering level facility study um, has been conducted right now, um, thanks to the town for supporting that financially and looking um, at all of school and district school and town facilities, um, that, that we won't need to do that as a separate um, piece of work. That report, we hope, will be available to us later this month. So I, we'll already have that information going into this work. Yeah, Anything else, David? I, I had a question, Meredith. Um, strategic planning could be enormous, and it could be narrowly focused, as Mike, Michael suggests. I'm, I'm curious as to what you think about it. Um, and then, depending on what you think about it, I might have another comment, might not. Sure. I, I think certainly there are pieces that, that require long-range planning. Facilities is one of those. Um, so, you know, again, I think the timing of the facility study is really beneficial to us as a district, and that is something you are looking at long-term, five years out, ten years out. You really have to project that far out in order to accomplish what you need to accomplish within existing financial resources. Um, I would say that the meat and potatoes of what people think of as a school district, that level of work around instruction and curriculum and uh, the direct work that we are doing with students in our classrooms, professional development, that work I think is best thought of in you know, kind of a mid-range, a three-year um, plan. I think if you, uh, while you may be thinking um, more long term, I think that it is harder to quantify the outcomes that you're looking for that far out. So I think staying nar more narrowly focused would be beneficial. So I, I guess I have another question. So your, your, your concept of the strategic plan is to plan for all material relevant uh, goals or events that we might be facing in the short term as well as long term. Is that essentially what a strategic plan is? Well, uh, again, I think that gets back to what is it that the board is looking for. I would say that, that part of what we know about education today and life today is that things change fairly rapidly. Um, you think of the field of technology, it would be hard for me to tell you what technology in schools is going to look like five years from now. I certainly can give you some thoughts and ideas, but it would be hard for me to give you a projection about that. I, th I think today the concept in schools is to really think about more nimble planning, so action planning, looking in the one to three year range uh, and trying to be as concrete and specific as possible about what it is that you hope to accomplish. Things like facilities, I think you have to be very mindful about long range plans for. So I, I don't necessarily see that as you can take the three-year pieces, the first three years, um, for facilities and incorporate that into an action plan. But I think you, in addition to that, you have to have a long-range plan for facilities. I don't necessarily see the long-range plan for facilities as totally the part of the action planning process. I, I couldn't hear the connecting. Is, I'm is sorry. I don't, I don't see those two as totally interrelated. I think you we have to do the long-range facilities plan, period. I think we also have to do a one to three year plan to establish the priorities and direction of the district. I, I'm just trying to get my, my arms around what a strategic plan is or what you envision a strategic plan to be, because it can be 
Absolutely. 100 right. pages long, it could be three pages long. And I, I would be, and I'm not sure which is, you know, what's, what's the best thing we should do. Um, I, I would throw out one thing to consider is one thing is financial planning in terms of revenue, future revenues. There's, I think it would be prudent now to plan considering depending, again, you can't predict what's going to be the result of certain elections, but um, amounts of revenue we're getting from the state and the federal government could, you know, we have to make some plans about decreasing or increasing or that's a major factor that could affect all of our plans. Is something like that would be included in the future plan or is that more of a budgetary thing? Uh, again, similar to facilities, I would say I, I view that as more of a budgetary item. As it's, this is more curriculum and um, instructional. That would be my view, and that I think is what aligns most with the feedback that we've received That's right. thus far. I would agree with that, most of the feedback in, in the three studies that Meredith mentioned um, is centers around curriculum and, and instructional design. Um, I think that Falmouth has an action plan mm -hmm. online, correct? Scarborough does as well. Mm -hmm. So this might be good references for the board to check out uh, to see sort of a one-page action plan and what Meredith is talking about. Um, it's, I know send those links if that would be helpful. Sure. Um, I know Falmouth has broken out by school um, and what their goals are uh, and how they plan to accomplish it. It's, um, it's pretty clear. And I would recommend there's one, uh, you know, issue that has come up the last, uh, you know, five, three, five, seven years that we should take uh, advantage of this opportunity to address is pre-K and, and kindergarten. I know there's, uh, you know, been discussions and, you know, uh, we should ignore what happened historically and just say, you know, looking forward, what's the, you know, how this impacts student learning, et cetera, and just use this opportunity to to make a decision, make an assessment, so we, we can, uh, um, you know, see if what the community supports and how that might fit into the overall goals of the district. Yeah, I would agree with Michael. I think there's been a resurgence of a push for that in, in recent, um, in I'd say the recent year. I've been on the board four years, and um, I've noticed more of a push for that, so it might be time to take a look at it again. Um, I would just like to, to say also, um, for those who may um, still be trying to get their hands around what strategic planning is and the experience that I've had with community strategic planning, um, it's easy to uh, explain it as a sort of analysis of your district's strengths and your district's gaps and compare your gaps to your goals so that you can put a plan in place on how to fill those gaps in to get to the goals that you want to meet in your future. Um, and I don't know if that helps explain strategic planning, but um, it's a good, good explanation. Um, I, th I think this whole side has comments, okay. is that right? <laughs> um, okay, so we'll just go, we'll go down the line, John first. Okay, okay. so, um, this, the, 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 the work that was done on the mission and vision seems like very sort of personal work to the community. This is about our community's values and what's important to us. It seems to me that, and, and, and your comment's a great segue, that, that it seems to me that if we're trying to then look at the, these are our, then represent our goals or our values, and we're looking at the gaps, um, at what point in the process do we, do we look outside the community um, to research that's been done elsewhere or you know, what's been effective outside the community? Because I know we've done, as you said, that we've done all this work internally to know, you know we, I think we have a very good sense of where the community wants to be by way of education, but, um, you know, but where, where, when do we look at, at what's, what's working? Is it, is it early childhood education that helps us bridge the gap, or is it, you know, experiential learning or project-based learning, or is it all these other, you know, things that people are talking about and working on? And when, and when in this process, I guess my question is, when in this process do we incorporate the work that people are doing around the country 
um, figure out how to bridge those gaps. Mid-October to late November. <laughs> that, is the, that really is the work of the working group. Okay. We'll, we'll hear locally what priorities are rising to the surface. Kindergarten and pre-K might be an example. Project-based learning could be an example. I'm not going to assume what will rise to the top and what, what won't. Um, and then the work of the committee is to say, okay, if this is, if this is what we want and this is where we want to be, how are we going to put that into place? Mm -hmm. So if, if we want in three years to have full day kindergarten or we want to have a, a universal preschool program available to members of this community, what needs to happen in order to get there? So it would be a, uh, looking at facilities. It, um, in that particular example, it would be looking at uh, what financial resources will we need to put into place, what partnerships might we, might we need to create, what training would we need to provide to staff. So, so that really is the job of the working group, is, is to lay that out, do the research, where are there existing resources. And at the same time, I would also say that's the work that happens after mid-January, because we're going to continually need to be looking around at, at what other models exist. Where can we get training? Where might we build a partnership? Uh, you know, if, if you choose project-based learning as, uh, you know, that's a goal that is established by the community through this process, then where can we go see people doing project-based learning in classrooms? How can we, who's doing great training for teachers around that model? Are there, um, you know, resources that we need to bring into our district that aren't here? We're going to need to continually go back and evaluate that. Um, so the committee will start that work, but it will be our job to sustain it. Does that help? Yes. Thank you. Elizabeth. Did you have a comment, or was it taken care of? It was taken care of. Okay, great. Kate? Um, I just, all I would say is um, this is really exciting. Mission to Vision is really exciting. And you can see when, John, you mentioned uh, project-based learning, progressive learning, and then how Meredith's back stood up and, you know, her face shined. Like, this is probably the work of educators that really um, excites the community. So early October, November to do this work is uh, great um, and it's exciting and it's, I would want to also say, I think it would be our job to reach out as the board or the committee um, to reach out to the L, uh, people who are not in the school system, um, young families and um, older families, because the educating our community about what's going on in the world is, um, I think, would build, you know, a closer, you know, add, add to our community and to this work. And I think um, you're absolutely right, Kate, that those outreach efforts are also what is going to make your plan successful. Yes. Um, you know, no one group among us is going to accomplish this without the support of the entire community. So the, the more we can spread the message and bring people into the process, um, I, I think the better the outcome. One other comment is we'll probably get negative comments, and so um, it'll be our job to take the negatives and the positives and learn from both of them. And I would just encourage that we'll probably learn more from criticism a lot of times. Or, you know, we may learn, get some good insight from our and I think the nice piece, uh, I'm sorry, the nice piece about um, structuring your forum um, using either of these models, and again, I've identified two. There are many others out there. I think these are two that would lend, the, based on my work here in the last year, these are two I think that would lend themselves well to um, this work, but, uh, but, I, but they are structured in such a way to sort of bring that in, in a way that can uh, that it's not personal and, and directed in such a way that it's going to undermine the whole process. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, there's room for that, you expect that, and um, it's just part of the work. Great. David? Uh, I guess this is the first I've really heard of this. I've done strategic planning within a <clears throat> different type entity, a business entity. So in a public entity, it's a it's a bit different. I, I know it's the only place on here, and I'm just, it's just a question. It's not a, uh, a critique. I don't know enough about this yet. The only place I see the board is that the, when we get the final draft presented. And the, 
Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I would say. I'm concerned about that. Uh, yeah, you're part of the stakeholders participating in the forums okay. initially. There are board members who are part of the working group. So well, I. See you answered my ultimate question, which is, as a board, our job is to, as elected officials, is to lead, not just. There's a bubble up theory and there's a leadership theory. We, we can't be just bubble up and get a final draft. We have to be involved throughout it. So you've Probably answered my question. We are. Elizabeth and I served on this committee with Meredith um, for the final and with the other stakeholder groups. I'm thinking you're, you'll probably do the same sort of. That's what I'm imagining as a, a working group, similar composition. I think that's important to note for the community that we would be involved as elected officials throughout this whole process. That's all. Joe. Um, well, and I was just going to say that I think part of the process um, for the board is to make sure that um, there's research and data-driven decision-making at that work group level to ensure that whatever implementation we decide has the research and the data behind it to show that it has been implemented somewhere else. These things have, are, are evidence-based and proven. And, um, and I really have great trust in our leadership to be able to guide us in that research and, and mining that data. So mm -hmm. terrific. And I will say I... I fully agree that as much as possible you want to have research-based, evidence-based practices, but I also think when you are um, trying to be innovative, sometimes there's not going to be the evidence behind everything you want to do, and, and that's part of the risk-taking. That, that's something you yeah. know, that, that we all have to be comfortable with as well, right? if, if, if mm -hmm. something like that were to come up. Right. And certainly one of our values is um, encouraging um, what is it? Where is our risk taking value? Um, <laughs> right. Well, per protecting risk taking and cultivating individual expression. Um, I think to have that at the top level is, uh, I think, will be important to model that at every level. But um, so there may be time, I mean, there may be things that aren't evidence based or. Um, or aren't supported by reams of data that we, uh, you know, we may have to make tough decisions. Be exciting to see. It will be. It will be. Okay. Any other comments or questions, concerns? Okay. So may I just add? So if you're comfortable with this in concept, and it sounds like in general, um, you're supporting the idea of the action planning mm -hmm. um, model. I will send you the links to the Scarborough and Falmouth action plans, and then I will try to lay out the dates, um, working around our calendars and um, all of the other challenges that occur uh, yeah. in, in schools and communities. So I, I want to make sure that we're holding forums on nights that don't conflict, for example, with other community events. Um, and I'll, I'll have that ready to go out. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good. So we will move on to goal number five, um, which was explore district topics during workshops and business meetings, including school to school transitions, teacher administrator evaluations, and um, curriculum alignment in schools. Uh, I think. This is an appropriate time. We may take this a little bit out of order, but it may be an appropriate time to look at the school board meetings calendar, the draft, and look at the workshops. We have a workshop in September. Um, a decision was made to look at job descriptions and hiring procedures. Uh, so that will be our September meeting. Um, it doesn't look like we address these topics of school to school transitions or evaluations until April and May of next year. Um, so, um, may I speak to one of them? And yes, you may. Turn to the discussion. Um, one of those items was teacher administrator evaluations, and as you may recall, the state. Um, there was a legislative change that occurred during the last legislative session for teacher and administrator evaluation. Because the rules are still being written for that, um, to me, jumping into that right away this fall um, for a board workshop, 
felt like it would be too soon. I will say that the intent is for teachers and administrators to begin looking at our evaluation model. And um, that work, I expect, will begin this fall. Um, as of right now, the intent is that we'll start those conversations, we'll, we'll review the law, we'll start looking at other evaluation models, um, reviewing what's working, what's not working internally, and I think would be in a position to share out that information um, in a more comprehensive way later in the year. But I could be persuaded to share some general information early on. Um. Okay. Um, the school to school transitions, if I'm not mistaken, I think we started the Fresh Links, I think the school environment has started the Fresh Links program about three years ago, and we've gotten, um, we've improved on it. So it's not a new work, so that might, um, it would be helpful to hear. I haven't heard much officially about how that's going, and what the um, new trends are and how kids are accepting it and how what teacher feedback is, parent feedback. So I don't know if that could be moved up. Moved up. Um, I'm wondering if that might be able to be moved into um, a business meeting, if we could incorporate that into a business meeting, a 20-minute presentation from the administrators on how they handle the transitions. Does yeah, I guess my question is, uh, I like attending meetings, I love attending meetings, but just to maybe narrow down, you know, on school to school transitions, you know, what specifically are we asking for? Is Absolutely. It, well, what's the issue? What are we trying to address? And if some of them can be addressed through, uh, you know, if it's no longer relevant for the school board, then, you know, we only have so many meetings we can do. So right. maybe on that one, is there a particular, or is it, uh, what's the particular issue? I mean, my yes, I think it was an issue that was brought up in um, at our retreat, obviously, because this is where we set those goals. Um, and I don't. Was remember. it middle school? To, so maybe we can put that one on the. It, we'll wait and see if someone on the board still feels that's a relevant topic. I'm seeing a. My my recollection, and again, this is why the four words there. Uh, so broad as to mean anything. My vague, rec again, this is my recollection. It, it was more about gaps between middle school to high school and, uh, and something of 5C, which was curriculum alignment school to school. It was. Those two were linked. Right. In mm -hmm. which case, I, I think there is an important issue there, um, not just how well do kids learn, find their way around the classroom or whatever. I mean, it's an important issue, and um, um, and I don't right, see I don't see five C on our, our meetings calendar for next year, or for you know next school year, I guess I call it. Mm -hmm. Meredith, do you have? Uh, well, I, I I thought there were two separate issues, um, and which is why we we separated them out. But certainly, the curriculum alignment school to school came up as a concern. But I think in general, it was what is the process for students transitioning from elementary to middle school, from middle school mm -hmm. uh, to high school. Although I would agree with Michael that we, administrators can certainly give a presentation on what that process looks like. But we would need to know what questions you have because we don't want to give you a presentation that doesn't provide you with any in, of the information that you actually want. Right, exactly. So if it's a general overview of the process, we certainly can talk about that. What, what are the steps? How do teachers share information? How are students uh, brought into the building, given an overview? How do they choose courses? I mean, it, it, those are the types of things I would imagine um, in an overview. But we would want to be responsive to your questions. Mm -hmm. David. Well, my own personal view is that that, in my own recollection, is that that um, is far less of an important issue than um, the silo issue, the vertical integration issue, whatever you want to call it. Um, and those are both related to the curriculum, school to school issue. It's all one big related issue. That's a far more important issue than the former one. I'd rather see that on our calendar. Um, as, a, as a full workshop, and the other one is more something that could be reported on 
at least it seems to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we've done some work on the social emotional piece of moving the kids and the preparation with mission and vision. So, um, but it would still, I think it would still be nice to hear from the administrators that they've done this work and they've recognized that we had some holes and some kids that, some families that needed, um, we need to do some work around it. So now we've done the work and how's it going and do we continue in that vein for an energy which will probably come out in the strategic planning piece. Um, because really it's a bigger issue and then we have the academic, we were, an, we had touched on the goals of having three schools aligned rather than a K-12 curriculum, that was our phrasing. So that got the K-12 curriculum where we would look at it all and make sure they were flu it flew and um, which then got into the specific curriculum questions that we all, um, that we talked about wide literacy, literacy coordinator and then at that point we had math issue with Pond Cove, um, a math group, we had just gotten into that. So now we're, you know, we haven't followed that trail. We did a math survey about um, Chicago math that went out to parents. That was never reviewed. That leads on to math, the, the big math question that David always um, brings up. It's not just math, but by right. the way. Well, yeah. Really, All it's really a, can I take a shot at this? Why don't we, uh, uh, we have a November 27th meeting that has a pretty full agenda, literacy goals, professional development, mm -hmm. common core standards, that sounds a lot of curriculum there. Yeah. And maybe if our school to school transitions, curriculum assignments, school to school aren't addressed in that, then we use the, uh, another meeting to say here's our specific questions because that, that might work. Um, then we'll have an overview of, um, we'll have something to, to base it on. Um, and maybe if we have additional questions, we add a meeting in January or, because we're going to have to do strategic plan um, at some point. It will be done um, in, in January, so we'll want to hear about that um, and have a full meeting on that. So does that seem reasonable? That would give us a month to pull questions together about the vertical alignment. Does that seem reasonable? Or do you? Um, you mentioned strategic plan. I'm, I'm getting confused now. I was simply trying to, to add to the at, agenda right, you have five C. So. Right. I you, think it sounds very reasonable. Okay. <laughs> strategic plan is in January. That's our January workshop, David. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Michael suggested that we wait to discuss vertical integration until we've heard about literacy goals and curriculum and professional development and common core state standards. So perhaps we add a meeting between, gosh, I think it would be, um, we'd have to add a January meeting because we don't have a December workshop. Well, why don't we submit questions because curriculum alignment is curriculum and we can say here's our questions and if maybe they'll be addressed as part of the November 27th meeting and if they're not then we can decide afterwards. Uh, right. I, I would add that I think in, in general because we had said our focus for at least this year would remain on literacy and professional learning communities that literacy was the curricular area I chose for a workshop topic. Mm -hmm. So I would say the overview of literacy will give you an understanding of the process um, and the work that is being done around alignment, particularly in the area of literacy. Um, I think we probably won't um, engage in a conversation about mathematics this year. I think that's more likely to occur next year. Mm -hmm. um, because of the work around the Common Core standards. The, not that those conversations aren't occurring within our school, but we are really focusing our professional development efforts um, are in the area of literacy this year. So I, I would prefer to restrict that conversation to the topic of literacy. Um, if we wanted to add an additional meeting to, to talk further about curriculum alignment and the curriculum cycle, that, that would make sense to me. 
I, I would agree with Mary. I think there's plenty to do. I don't think you can jam it into the November 27th. I think it would be helpful earlier than the May 28th if we added a meeting to at least start the ball rolling on. So you want a, uh, an additional meeting sooner rather than? Well, or quite. I have to ask Meredith more. I mean, to me, it's, it's not a good use of our time to have an entire workshop on school-to-school -school transitions versus uh, curriculum alignment school-to-school. -school. If there was a goal I would put in head of school-to-school -school transitions, it would be the curriculum one. So either we'd make the May 28th one or keep the May 28th one as both and maybe have an additional one to start the ball rolling. But that would be my suggestion. Am I being clear? Yes, you are, and um, I'm fine. I don't know, how does everyone feel about changing the school-to-school -school transition to curriculum alignment, vertical cur curriculum alignment? I feel Perhaps great we about A and C together. Is that what I'm hearing? Um, do you want to add, do you want to put those two together, or do you want to just do curriculum alignment? Or it's hard to decide that. Go ahead, Meredith. Well, I, I will take a stab. I think what I heard was that uh, your, the information you're asking for around school to school transitions might be something that could be presented in a business meeting, That's that it I might be short in duration. It could be a 20 minute presentation. Mm -hmm. That would give you the information you need. Yes. But you would prefer to spend more time talking about yes. curriculum and so to, to shift the May meeting to be. Yes. And whether it happens in an extra meeting or on the 28th, as long as we start on it, that's what I'm looking for based on our original goals that we worked on. That makes sense to me. And that's, I may not have been clear about what I was saying, but yeah, switching that out. Um, so school to school transitions, if there, I mean, does the board have concern? Would you like to hear from the administration on school to school transitions? We talked about that during the, the retreat. Um, is that still a, concern, a valid and relevant concern to the board? Yes. For presentation at a business meeting? Yes. Okay, so if we can add that to a business meeting and then change the May 28th meeting to um, address vertical curriculum alignment. Make sense? Yes, to me. All right. All right, so um, item number six, Meredith has already addressed, create an online district report card or an annual report card that includes agreed upon benchmarks to measure the district's performance. We should get a link um, from Eric later this week, hopefully. Andrea. Yep. And Andrea, Andrea has, uh, I'm uh, um, hearing that she has put a great deal of work into that and we appreciate that and look forward to seeing seeing what she's come up with and having an opportunity to, to weigh in on um, that document before it goes public. That's wonderful. Thank you for that. Can I have one ask a question on that? Uh, I know any times with data, you know, it's, uh, you don't want to, I, I, you know, our literacy scores, for example, go up a little bit when you're going to have volatility, you know, different. Um, will, we, will there be uh, some sort of uh, <coughs> Primer, I guess, is the word on how we're going to use this online district. If you know we do a little bit worse, and uh, whatever the standards are for sixth grade reading, it doesn't mean we're going to, we're, you know, we have major issues. So just so the community knows how we use this, and you don't have to answer, but it might be helpful just so everyone knows. Here's what it is. Here's what it isn't, and here's how we utilize this information. There will be a narrative to accompany Narrative, that. I knew. That is not fully incorporated right now into the documents you have, so that you know that. I think right now what we're trying to make sure is, is this the information you want? Okay. Um, so that's, that's the initial feedback, okay. but I absolutely agree. There are so many ways to interpret data and so many sources of data out there that, that people need. Um, to be pointed in certain directions about what the value of particular data is or what its intended use is. Okay. All right, and our last goal I'm going to have John speak to. Item number seven is initiate an audit of the Cape Elizabeth School Policy Manual. Okay, well that's, that's done. We have initiated the audit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good job, John. <laughs> That's how to set a goal we can achieve. I like that. <laughs> Let's um, start our like goals to initiate. <laughs> <next year. laughs> we are working our way through the through the this, the school policy manual. If anyone, if you're not familiar with it, it's a it's a it's a four inch thick uh, um, three ring binder. Um, we are we are working our way through, uh, starting with the, the policies that are required by law, um, and including the policies that have had recent changes in the law. So that in that they need to be changed, um, and so we're updating those sort of core policies um, with a view toward streamlining the policy manual, moving what we can out of out of board level policy and into um, administrative procedures uh, in order to make that document uh, more manageable and, and I think more valuable to the district. So again, we're, we're we're working our way through only the policies required by law where we, we started with policies that were um, coded with the letter A. We're, 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 we're working on policies now that are coded with the letter J. So that's to give you a sense of where we are. Um, the manual only goes to K, does it not really? to Z. Well, like everything else, it doesn't matter how many letters there are if you have 19,000 subsets under each letter, which is what it does. Yeah, we, 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 there's, there's a lot of work left to be done. Um, I don't think we're one letter away from. <laughs> um, maybe we are one. <laughs> and and the, the the policy committee meets very early in the morning, um, and has been tireless in in its pursuit of um, of this project. So I want to thank everybody who's who's worked very hard to to move that forward, um, particularly Ann Chapman, who's um, from Drummond Woodson, who's helped us. Um, make sense of it all and, and make sense of this, the state and federal law. Uh, she's been very valuable to that, to that team. And um, the, the, oh, I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but the, the next policy committee meeting is just to show you how hard they work, is scheduled for Columbus Day at 7.30 in the morning. Wow. Um, but I'm kidding, we're, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll reschedule that. Um, and we're looking to reschedule that for the 1st of October. Yeah, to the week before. To the week before, um, if, that, if that works. So we'll, the, you, we'll, we'll, to everybody who likes to attend that meeting, we'll send out information and, and uh, hopefully we'll schedule it for the Monday, the 1st of October. Great. There's something else on the 1st. Oh, yeah, Michael, I need to check with you about the 1st, the audit report. Uh, I can do it. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, so that's, those are our goals, and um, I think, John, you included a committee report there as well, so um, thank you for that. Uh, David. I just want to add two comments to this. One, um, I want the public to understand that what John is spearheading, it's not four inches, it's more like seven inches, because I have the book. It's double-sided. It's a beast. It is enormous task, mm -hmm. not only to cut out the unnecessary stuff, but to craft what's there in a, comp in a comprehensible fashion and in compliance with law is an enormous task. Um, secondly, I just want to, again, for the public to know, when you did goal three, when we were doing, uh, excuse me, goal, goal two, the uh, union contracts were on a fourth one. It, 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 I would want to add that we didn't just successfully negotiate, we successfully negotiated within certain parameters that we think were vital for the town. It was suggested by Meredith, and there was something we all agreed upon. One is to make sure we attract and keep the best possible people. But the second goal was also to do it within the, within the confines of offering it in terms of terms and in terms of uh, pay and benefits, comparable on a fair market basis with, with the people we compete against. So one, it was done with achieving the goal that people want, and second, within the economic confines of what we think we can operate as in being a first-rate uh, school district system, yet being mindful of the taxpayer and the dollar. So I, I just wanted the public to understand that there were two principal goals, I mean, two principal guidelines that we utilized, and they, they were what merits came at them, arrived at them, and I think it was proved to be very successful. And, um, those, those negotiations may have been time consuming, but they were done with those principles in mind, and I, I think we ended up with great contracts. Thank you for pointing that out, David. You're very good at looping back and, and 
um, following up on Lawyers that. get paid by the word and, <laughs> and closing the loop, too. Yeah, send the bill. Okay, so thank you. Um, I appreciate that. All right, so we'll move on to item number seven then, committee reports. You just did your committee reports. Any other committee reports? Do you have anything to add to the policy? We will have another slate of October 1st. 15 policies before the board for first read at our next board meeting. Maybe, maybe more because, mm -hmm. we're, because the, the fact that we're meeting October 1st actually gives us an opportunity to, to maybe give you, you guys even more policies for the next board meeting. So there will be, we'll try to get them to you as early as possible. Maybe we can get the first bunch. We're working on them. Sooner, okay. Yeah. And, and um, because there will be a number of them. Um, so yes, there, there are a lot of policies coming the board's way for first read at the next meeting. And for the finance committee, I still have an open invitation for any uh, uh, questions or, or uh, topical items. If you might want to remember back to the budget process, and I imagine some of us at the time said, I wish I had done more work on things such as you know contingencies or this. So uh, there's a lot of items, and if, if you just let me know if something's come up since then, um, you know, as, just a reminder, 80% of the the budget is relates to you know uh, salaries uh, and benefits, and that's those amounts are actually established <clears throat> by the school board. So even though we look to our administrators, um, you know, to find uh, and be efficient, you know, the school board has a large um, part of that. And the reason I said that is you know there's um, some topics within that um, that that we may want to look at in terms of um, you know, uh, you know, uh, health care benefits. There's a committee for that, but th there may be one committee we want to look at overall, you know, longer term, um, you know, opportunities. Um, so if anyone has any ideas, if they would forward those to me, and then I'll set up an agenda, um, you know, f for the upcoming uh, board workshop. Most likely on the November 27th one, I imagine that's a pretty heavy. Um, workshop topic so we may do the finance committee earlier so um, you know just to get that out of the way but I'll send out a, some times uh, in the next few weeks okay. um, you bring up a good topic other than um, the, uh, the topics we want to talk about the time to start in the past we've we've done the meetings beforehand and then we moved a little bit last year to doing the meetings after the workshop so our administrators could leave and go home. I'm wondering if the board has a preference um, in terms of where we'd like to place those finance committee meetings on workshop evenings. I would love, um, I think administrators and teachers, the sooner we get them home and I'm sure they're not done with their work, even when they go. I mean, they're always working. Um, so I would lead to let to whatever works for the administrators to be able to leave the building. Does that seem reasonable? And uh, I think it does. does Paul, I'm not sure. Does Pauline stay regardless? Generally, yes. Are we putting the? I don't know how you can do budget without Pauline, but that's all right. Or finance. No, she would have to. She would stay. Yeah. Pa Pauline and I would stay, or okay. we would take turns. But uh, I mean, I, you know, that's that's fine. Okay. So we don't typically stand in front of students at you know 7:30 in the morning. So <laughs> for the two of us, it's okay. <laughs> so what time would you like to start the um, the workshops? Then we could start them. We've been traditionally starting them at our, our finance meetings at 6.30. Should we start the workshops at 6.30? Mm -hmm. And have the workshops 6.30 to 8, and then workshops are traditionally 90 minutes. Or do people want to come earlier? 6.30 works well for me. Yeah. So you can have dinner with yeah. your families? OK. Kids fit. Yes. Okay, so we'll, we will start workshops at 6.30. Um, 
And the order of workshop and finance committee is correct. So 6.30 workshop, 8 o'clock finance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Any agenda um, for and agenda requests for school board meetings? Anything? No? Okay. Announcements of upcoming meetings. And you've already announced yours. So um, we do have a workshop coming up on September 25th to address hiring procedures. And there'll be a finance, I think Michael's already said there'll be a finance meeting then as well. Um, so uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Anyone? Yes. You guys want to Please. Stay? No, no, no. <laughs> I move that we adjourn. Anyone talk some more? Okay, second. All those in favor? Thank you, everyone.